Hallelujah, Jesus is risen. Welcome this day. I am Pastor Doug Jones, the lead pastor here at Evangelical Lutheran Church. And while it's still difficult to worship in person, we invite you to join with us today to celebrate the miracle of the resurrection and to rejoice with all the world in God's presence in our lives today and always. While we may not be able to worship together, we can celebrate and we can still be the people of God in this place. We welcome you and we hope that this day and this week and this season will refresh your lives, give you hope of life everlasting. Thank you for being with us. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts, shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God now and forever. Amen. Spirit be with you all, and also with you. people. 
Let us pray together. O God, you give us your Son as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection, that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 22, verse 25 through 31. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perform my vows in the sight of those who fear the Lord. The poor shall eat and be satisfied. Let those who seek the Lord give praise. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn to the Lord. All the families of nations shall bow before God. For dominion belongs to the Lord, who rules over the nations. Indeed, all who sleep in the earth shall bow down in worship. All who go down to the dust, though they be dead, shall kneel before the Lord. Their descendants shall serve the Lord whom they shall proclaim to generations to come. They shall proclaim God's deliverance to a people yet unborn, saying to them, the Lord has acted. The lesson of the day comes from Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. A little bit of context, this is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch and a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join it. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this, like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter and like a lamb silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom may I ask you, does this prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, look, here's water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus and he was passing through the region. He proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, and you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus tells some wonderful parables, and so frequently he uses images from the world of agriculture around him. We know the wonderful story of the sower. Last week we had the story of Jesus as the Good Shepherd and that vision. But one of my favorites is the one that we have today, where Jesus talks about being the vine and we are the branches. And God is the vineyard owner, the caretaker of the vine. That is just wonderful imagery. And it's so deep in terms of what it tells us about our relationship with God. First of all, it reminds us that we are not the vine. We are the branches. We are rooted in Jesus. And Jesus brings us the nourishment and the life that we need. That all exists through Jesus. We're just the branches. And if you become separated from Jesus, you wither and you can even die. I remember years ago having a conversation with a friend who was Jewish. And they said to me, even though we had both lost our fathers about the same time, that there was never a day that went by that they didn't miss their father and cry. But somehow I still had my father. That's because we are rooted in Jesus Christ. My life has its roots in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and nothing can shake me from that grace as long as I stay connected to Jesus. But without Jesus, my friend found themselves separated, broken, brittle, and hurting. It is so critical in our lives that we stay connected with our roots, our root is in Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit can only fill our lives with life and joy and love when we stay rooted in Jesus Christ. That's the first image that I understand in this story. But I'm sitting here today in my conservatory because I'm looking at all of the vines and everything and you know, when Jesus talks about that, he's talking about a grapevine. And if you've ever set it under a trellis of a grapevine or wisteria or even, you know, English ivy, you can sit there and look up and you realize you see all of that vine connected above you. And you can't tell where one branch begins and another one ends. It is just a mess. Look behind me right now. You can't tell which branch is which. 
They are all interconnected and they interweave and they are tied to one another. And I think that's even the greater message of this parable that Jesus gives us today. We can never be separated from the other human beings in this world. If there's one thing the pandemic has taught us, that something that happens on the other side of the world can have such a dramatic effect on us. We don't exist on an island and we are not independent of one another. We are always dependent upon one another. And if there is not justice for all of us, there is not justice for any of us. If there is not love for all of us, there is a brokenness that we all experience. That is how a vine works. And together, it's inseparable. That's the other thing that's fascinating about vines. If you've ever tried to rip a vine out of the growth, it's almost impossible because it intertwines so greatly you can't get it out. That's how we're meant to be, connected, locked to one another. God created us to be in relationship, not only with God, but with one another. And for us truly to blossom and prosper and grow stronger, we need to be in relationship with one another. That is the message of this gospel. Jesus is our root. God takes care of this plant. God will care for us. And we are connected to one another as that occurs. And what cares for one of us cares for each of us. And what damages one of us damages all of us. So look around you today. Realize you are a part of this vine. You are not the only part of this vine. You are not the only branch. You are but one piece, interconnected with all the other human beings in this world, created together to be one magnificent and blooming vine. And as long as we connect with one another, support one another, and stay rooted in Jesus Christ, we will live. And that is the promise of Easter. We were created for life and life abundant. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.
we the members of Evangelical Lutheran Church of Frederick believe that through God's grace we are richly blessed and as God's servants we are called to seek, serve, share, and send God's blessings throughout God's community. Inspired by the gospel to love one another, we commit to Jesus' call to be generous in sharing God's gifts. As a congregation, we are invited to kindly and collectively lift up our time, talent, and treasures in support of Jesus' plan for us to serve our community. A reading from Psalm 118. I called to the Lord in my distress. The Lord answered by setting me free. It is better to rely on the Lord than to put any trust in flesh. It is better to rely on the Lord than to put any trust in rulers. I was pressed so hard that I almost fell, but the Lord came to my help. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The one who is righteous may enter. His mercy endures forever. Siblings in Christ. We are gathered to ask God's blessing as we dedicate this columbarium to the glory of God with thanksgiving. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, giver of life and conqueror of death, be with you all. And, and also, also with, with you. you. Let us pray together. God, God of, of the, the living, living and, and of the dead, dead you, you have, have made, made your, your people, people to be a pilgrim, pilgrim church, church to be welcomed by you into its eternal home. Be with us now as we gather to set apart this columbarium, 
May this place prepare in the sure and certain hope of resurrection never cease to remind us of the life that we are to share in Christ, who will transform our earthly bodies to be like his in glory. For he is Lord forever and ever. Amen. The Lord is my shepherd. I need nothing more. You give me rest in green meadows, setting me near calm waters where you revive my spirit. You guide me along sure paths. You are true to your name. Though I should walk in death's dark valley, I fear no evil with you by my side, your shepherd's staff to comfort me. You spread a table before me as my foes look on. You spend my head with oil. My cup is more than full. Goodness and love will tend me every day of my life. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. A reading from Job. Oh, that my words were written down. Oh, that they were inscribed in a book. Oh, that with an iron pen and with lead they were engraved on a rock forever. For I know that my Redeemer lives and that at the last he will stand upon the earth. And after my skin has been destroyed, then in my flesh I shall see God, whom I shall see on my side, and my eyes shall behold, and not another. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. God of creation and consolation, our mortal bodies return to the dust from which they were shaped. Yet in your way of mercy, you have turned this condition of darkness and death into a proof of your loving care. In your providence, you assured Abraham, our father in faith, of a burial place in the land of promise. Jesus showed his power over death at Lazarus's tomb. You willed that your own son be laid to rest in a new tomb so that he might rise from it, the victor over death, and offer us the pledge of our own resurrection. Grant that this columbarium, placed under the sign of the cross, may by the power of your blessing be a place of rest and hope. resurrection. May the bodies who will rest here sleep in your peace to rise immortal at the coming of your son. You, you are, are our, our life, life and resurrection. May this place be a comfort to the living, a sign of their hope in unending life. You, you are, are our, our life, life and resurrection. May prayers be offered here continually in constant praise of your mercy and in the hope of resurrection. You are our life and resurrection. Almighty God, by the death and burial of Jesus, your anointed, you destroyed death and made holy the graves of all your saints. As you raised up your son, Jesus, the first fruits of those who sleep, so also by your spirit, give us a share of that new life which you have promised. All this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, Father in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, your, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give, give us today, today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Yes, 
servant Moses, righteousness being restored. But though these are days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword, still we are the voice in the desert crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, He comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, and trumpet call. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 The risen Christ fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and direct your days and your deeds in peace. Amen. Amen.